Hello, welcome back. We're going to continue on with our select statement. We'll look at the WHERE clause. So let's look at a few slides here. Uh, this is the syntax. So we learned already select some set of columns from some table. Now we can add a WHERE clause. So we say WHERE some condition. And the conditions typically are comparing values. Things like name equals Jack or salary is greater than 3,000 or GPA is greater than, greater than or equal to 3.5. Remember that we're dealing with rows and columns, so we use the uh, select statement to determine which columns to return. The WHERE clause will, will, will determine which rows to return. So if you can imagine um, doing a comparison of credit rating equals 2, then it would only return the rows that had a credit rating equal to 2, which would be these three rows. There'd actually be more because we've truncated this table but hopefully you get the idea. So here's the basic form of a select statement with where. We say select the columns that we want to filter on or filter down to from the database, the schema, the table, but really we're looking for the table here, where the name is equal to, and if we're comparing strings we put the value inside of single quotes. So here's some operators you can use. Again, you compare strings using single quotes. You can use less than, greater than, not equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to. There's some logical operators we'll look at. And if we're looking for null, we'll use is null. So let's jump over and do a few queries here. So the first thing I wanted to point out to you in SSMS is that you can break SQL, uh, SQL statements up over multiple lines. And so you'll notice here that I have the select star and then I have the from statement here. And I'm going to go ahead and add the where clause right here. And what I want to do is put the name of the column that I want to test. So let's say credit rating. And if I say equal to one, then what I would expect is the result set would only include those rows where the credit rating was equal to 1. So I can go ahead and hit the Execute button. Now another SQL Server Management Studio trick I'd like to show you is how you can highlight a query to run it. And I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to change this query to be equal to 2. And to execute this, what I'll do is highlight just the query I want to execute and hit the Execute button. And I can jump back up here, highlight, and hit Execute, and it will run the, that one. If I don't highlight either one, it'll run both queries. And so what you'll notice is I get two result sets back. But this is a nice feature for SQL Server to be able to, or SQL Server Management Studio, to be able to highlight and um, uh, just just highlight and then hit the execute button. Okay, um, so let's do a string. So name again. You can look at the types over here. So in var char fifty, and we'll talk more about this when we start building our own tables. But in var char fifty means that it's a string. And so what that means is that if I'm going to compare any values there, it has to be in single quotes. So let's put name as our field. And what we will do here is put cycling master all enclosed in single quotes. And then I will highlight that query and run it. In this case, we're, we, we expect it to only return one row. Okay. So I'm going to pause this for just a second. Okay, so that's how we compare strings. Let's jump back to our slides. Oh, we wanted to look at is null. So, we have a column out there called Purchasing Web. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about what null is. 
Null is not the characters in U L L. It's actually it actually means there's been no value put in this field at all. You'll notice it has a bit of a yellow highlight on it to denote that. So it's what you don't want to do is ever use the word null in your database because it can get confusing. And so what we want to do here is look for purchasing web service URL and you might be tempted to say equals null, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is say is null. So when you're checking for null, you want to use is null. So this will return all the rows where that field for that row is a null. And there actually is a few values in there that, that have a value. So, okay, so that's our null. Um, let's look at and and or for just a minute. So what if we say credit rating is equal to one or active flag is equal to zero. So now we're doing a more compound logic and what we're saying here is anything where the credit rating is a one or active flag is zero. So let's see if we have, actually let's do this. Let's do credit rating equals two or active flag equals zero. So it'll pick anything up where the credit rating is a two or the active flag is a zero. So let's run that and you can see the results there. So we see those. And if we do and, it says, well, the credit rating is a two and the row also has to have an active flag of zero. And I didn't highlight, so let me do that again and run it. And I only got one row back where the credit rating was a two and the active flag was a zero. So you can use ands and ors, and you could have more expressions here if you needed to. Okay, let's go on. Like is a nice feature. It's a wildcard. Now, it's different than command line wildcard with an asterisk and a question mark. This uses a percent sign and an underscore. So the percent sign replaces any number of characters. The underscore replace, replaces a single character. So let's see what that might look like. Let's wipe all of that out. And let's say name is equal to or sorry, like a percent. So what that means is, is show me any name that starts with the letter A. And so you'll notice that just comes back with that set. If I say A underscore S percent, then it's looking for anything that starts with an A followed by any single character followed by the letter S, followed by anything else. And we only have one row that matches, which is Australia Bike Retailer. Okay. Compound logic, we just looked at that, so I'm not going to go over that again, but you could combine the like and the, and the uh, other comparison operators. We can have calculations in a where clause. So this is a bad example because this uh, preferred vendor status and active flag are actually flag or indicators but I just wanted to show you that you can do math in addition so if you said something like where credit rating plus preferred value status preferred vendor status is greater than three So what it will do is it will add credit rating plus preferred vendor status. So it takes this value plus this value. And, and, it, and so the result of these two would be a 5, which is greater than 3, which is why it returned. And if we said less than 3, we'd get a different set of things returned. <coughs> so you can use math. Turns out you can use math in the column as well. I, let me just show you that real quick.
So now I'm going to change the column heading to say some calculation, and it's going to be it's going to have in it the value of credit rating plus preferred vendor status. Remember, it doesn't change the actual value in the database. This is just the result set that's returned. So you can do some math um, pretty easily there. Okay. So we'll do that operating system update a little bit later. All right. Between. Okay, so let's look at between real quick. And then we'll be done for this video. So we can say where credit rating is between 1 and 2. So this is the same thing as saying credit rating is greater than or equal to 1 and credit rating is less than or equal to 0, but it's a little bit quicker to write. Okay. And that's it for our slides. So hopefully that helped you understand a little bit more about how we can expand the select statement to include a WHERE clause to filter out the rows that come back. Uh, so we'll go on next time and talk about sorting. That'll be our next topic. Thanks for watching.